Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and the mercy and blessings of Allah be with you all. Thank you for joining me for this live post. Uh, in this post, I want to look at the question, is Jesus, peace be upon him, God? Uh, a friend of mine has asked me to give him some simple proofs uh, to show that uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, is not God. And uh, I hope that this video will suffice for him and uh, for others who might be wandering along the same lines. So, is Jesus uh, God? Well, in our last uh, post, I was looking at uh, uh, Paul's um, uh, hymn uh, to Christ, and uh, I, in a way, I, this follows up from that, in that we want to see, does Paul really believe that Jesus, uh, on whom be peace, is God? Uh, if he does, then that makes a lot of difference between uh, Muslims and Christians and in our dialogues. But if Paul does not believe that Jesus is God, then that changes things because it would mean that one of the chief proponents of Christianity does not believe that Jesus is God. So uh, today's uh, uh, discussion uh, will focus on 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy is uh, a letter purportedly written by the Apostle Paul. Nowadays, uh, uh, scholars, uh, uh, even of some uh, conservative bands, uh, would hold that Paul did not actually write this. Um, of course, some conservative scholars will maintain that Paul wrote it, uh, but we'll see the implications both ways. So, uh, on the one hand, if Paul wrote it, it would mean that uh, in this letter, Paul is clearly expressing a view according to which Jesus is not God, but he's just a mediator between man and God. And if he is not the author of this letter, well, then that uh, plunges up, it plunges us into the problem of pseudonymity, pseudonymity, and uh, that is uh, the idea of uh, false authorship. Uh, whereas uh, so the the writer says, "I am Paul," but uh, now we will have to hold the view that this is not Paul, and and that comes with problems uh, of its own and difficulties for the traditional Christian view. But even on this view, uh, if we, if, if, even if we say that someone else other than Paul wrote this, uh, the, the whole uh, appearance of this um, exercise of writing in Paul's name is for the writer to portray uh, what, according to the writer's opinion, uh, is Paul's view. In other words, he is writing as though he is writing Paul's view on the matter, uh, or on, on every matter that the letter touches upon. And, uh, and, and more uh, so specifically, the question of whether or not Jesus is God. So uh, from uh, if, if, if Paul is writing it, then Paul is clearly showing that this is not, Jesus is not God. And if someone else is writing this, then that someone else is trying to tell us that in Paul's view, Jesus is not God. So let's let's see how that plays out. Let's uh, look at the letter. I am opening Bible Hub and uh, I'm looking at uh, 1 Timothy. Uh, so BibleHub.com, B-I-B-L-E-H-U-B.com. And then I go to 1 Timothy and uh, chapter 1. So 1 Timothy is easy to look. It's in the New Testament uh, books, uh, among the New Testament books. So you go past all of the Old Testament books uh, to 1 Timothy. This is, you know, towards the end. If there's a long list of uh, books of the Bible, uh, 1 Timothy is going to be towards the end. In the New Testament section, that too, to, uh, towards the end. Now, uh, let's see how it reads in the New International Version. And I picked the New International Version here because... Uh, I don't want to be contentious. I want to look at a version which is widely acclaimed by Christians. So traditional Christians, even even and especially evangelical Christians, uh, will acknowledge this as uh, a very Christian and evangelical translation of the Bible. Uh, so a new international version. Uh, so First Timothy chapter 1, starting with verse number 1, let's uh, read it together. It's, it reads as follows. Uh, and by the way, I will be looking at your questions and comments uh, in detail later. But for the moment, I see that uh, Osumanu uh, Wangabi has uh, shared, uh, has said salam, alaikum salam, 
my brother and sorry if I mispronounce your name uh, obviously there there's so much I need to learn and various languages I just came back from Malaysia and uh, well, alhamdulillah when I was there I was trying to learn some Malaysian words and <laughs> speak a few words here and there um, but but I have much more to learn and of course there are so many languages in the world we cannot learn them all uh, but uh, I will continue to try because I like to speak uh, various languages um, and uh, you know that that is a way of bridging uh, cultural gaps uh, and and I want to be you know uh, close to our brothers and sisters from various parts of the world okay so uh, please if you feel that this uh, uh, discussion is beneficial please uh, share it uh, with others okay brother Osumanu is uh, um, it's telling me I said it correctly thank you brother Osmanu and uh, it's all it almost sounds like Osman uh, Osman but uh, you know better uh, okay and uh, Bethesda Bethesda yes uh, uh, Bethesda is uh, a biblical uh, a location in, in the New Testament uh, um, yeah Bethesda is mentioned in the New Testament interesting and uh, brother Abdullah Basiru has said salam alaikum as well wa alaikum as salam and he's praying for the protection of me and the ummah and uh, I say I mean to that brother uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you as well and uh, everyone uh, around you um, all of your loved ones and I see that uh, you are connected with the Ghana Red Cross Society mashallah uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and uh, all of the good work that you are doing Okay, so, and uh, Brother Osman who says that I'm right, uh, so probably about uh, the name being Osman. And uh, Bethesda is a city in Maryland. Maryland, okay, Maryland. Uh, uh, is that in the United States of America? Maryland, uh, United States, okay. Um, interesting. Um, I just looked that up very quickly. You could have told me, but uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, maybe you'll tell me so I don't have to look it up. Salam from Baba uh, Isaka. Uh, Wa alaikum salam, my, my brother. Okay, so let me um, proceed then with uh, the study. So 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 1 in the New International Version of the Bible, it reads like this. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope, uh, to Timothy, my dear son in the faith. A couple of quick comments here. Uh, Paul, uh, the, the, the writer is saying, basically, I am Paul. This is Paul, apostle of Jesus Christ, by the command of God our Savior, and of Christ Jesus our hope, to Timothy, my true son in the faith. So, ostensibly, Paul is writing to Timothy, and he's referring to Timothy as his, as his son, even uh, calling him my true son in the faith uh, so it shows you how the term son son of god can be used in a metaphorical sense because here uh, paul is referring to timothy as his true son in the faith uh, so son in the faith not necessarily actual uh, biological son and then he continues grace mercy and peace from god the father and christ jesus our lord so uh, jesus is referred to as our lord uh, but there is one who is called god and that one is the father so uh, grace mercy and peace from god the father and christ jesus our lord so there are two one is god the other one is lord uh, this we know from elsewhere in Paul's writings uh, to be Paul's view. A uh, distinction between God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 6, for example. But I want to stick with uh, 1 Timothy here uh, for the moment. So and now uh, he goes on in verse number 3. As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, stay there in Ephesus so that you may command certain people not to teach false doctrines any longer. So all of this ostensibly is, uh, uh, you know, from the point of view of Paul writing. So Paul is saying to Timothy, uh, I urged you uh, when I went to Macedonia and so on. So uh, he is reminding him of uh, what he already told him before. All right, and now we come to uh, verse number 17, where uh, Paul is, uh, is, you know, making a, a benediction. He is uh, glorifying God. So let's see how he does that. It's chapter 1, verse number 17. 
Now, to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, when, when he writes like this, uh, whom do you think Paul is refer, referring to as the King eternal, the immortal, the invisible, the only God? And he's saying to him, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Obviously, he's referring to the Father, and we'll see a more clear indication of this as we, as we proceed. So he's, he's making a distinction between God and Jesus. They're, they're not one and the same. Um, um, let, let me go now into the second chapter of, uh, of First Timothy. So I go here, second chapter, chapter 2. In chapter 2, um, he's giving instructions on worship. So the heading in the New International Version of the Bible indicates. Verse number 1. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all goodness and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man, Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. So let's think about that. That's the first five verses, uh, first six verses rather, of First Timothy chapter 2. So let's analyze this a little bit more. So he wants his readers uh, to pray on behalf of all people. He wants people to pray, he wants his readers to pray for the kings and those in authority. Uh, and he wants to live peaceful and quiet lives uh, in all goodness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior. So when he says God our Savior, whom is he referring to? Think about that for a moment. And before answering, let's go to verse number four. Who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth? And now verse number five. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind. And who is that mediator? He specifies the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. So uh, th this writing is very clear. There is only one God, and there is one mediator between God and man. So if you have God, and you have humans down here, then uh, there is a mediator between God and human beings. Now, of course, this is not a Muslim view, so we, we should not uh, say, okay, well, you know, the uh, New Testament teaches exactly what Muslims believe in all respects. No, uh, but uh, in, in this one instance, uh, or, or rather on this one topic, there are many instances where the New Testament is uh, teaching a doctrine which clearly in, implies that Jesus is not God, uh, but rather he is a mediator between man between man, meaning human beings, and God. And uh, in, uh, occupying this intermediate position between humans and God means, clearly, he's not God himself. He's just in between the two ends. God on top, human beings below, uh, the, the mediator in between. And how is this mediator described? He's called uh, the man the man Jesus Christ, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. Now, it is a side issue for us to just be aware for the moment uh, that this uh, passage uh, indicates that Jesus died for all people. Whereas uh, some of the people that debate with us, especially those who are of the Calvinistic uh, strand of Christianity, uh, some will insist uh, within that strand that Jesus did not die for all people. He only died for those who are called the elect. And recently I had a debate with, uh, together with Brother Yusuf Ismail, 
um, uh, debating uh, uh, Reverend Samuel Green from Australia and uh, Rudolf Boshoff. Uh, and these gentlemen took the view that, uh, these Christian gentlemen that is, took the view that Jesus died only for the elect. Uh, so that means uh, God already decided who are the people who are going to be saved. Uh, those are called the elect people. God elected them to be saved. And Jesus died for them, but didn't die for the rest of the world. And you can see why some people may have um, gravitated to that view. Because if you say that Jesus died for the entire world, it will mean that the entire world should have been saved automatically. But if he died only for the elect, then of course the elect are saved. Even that too comes with complications. Uh, because we are told in the end that still the elect has to do good deeds and avoid sins and all of that. Otherwise they wouldn't be elect. Um, but uh, nonetheless, it, it it just gets past one problem of, you know, if you think that Jesus died for the entire world, why isn't the entire world uh, saved? But uh, let's leave that point aside for the moment. Uh, that, as I said, is just uh, something for us to be aware of. Uh, but for the moment, focusing on the question of whether or not Jesus on whom be peace is God, here we have a clear indication that Paul, uh, or the writer of this letter uh, called the letter to Timothy, 1 Timothy, uh, does not uh, believe that Jesus is God. Rather, this writer is representing Jesus as an intermediary between God and human beings, and that intermediary is himself called the man, Christ Jesus. Okay, so now, remember uh, first, uh, uh, the first chapter, verse number 17, has used certain terms for God. I'm going to go back to that for a moment and then see how that plays out in, in the end of this uh, uh, letter. Because it's important to see sometimes how uh, a thing begins and how it ends. Uh, in uh, ancient writers, uh, had this idea of uh, uh, joining the the uh, end to the beginning. So what is said in the end reflects back on what was said at the beginning. So at the beginning, he had uh, spoken about God uh, being immortal. Um, that was verse number 17, chapter 1, verse number 17, where he said, Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible the only god be honor and glory forever and ever amen now so the one who is called the only god here is the king eternal the immortal one what does it mean immortal immortal is a simple english word which means that he does not die uh, one who is mortal dies uh, one who is immortal doesn't die now when when paul is writing this this is uh, uh, decades after jesus on whom be peace had already left the scene so Jesus came into the world, and according to the New Testament Gospels, Jesus died. Uh, and, and Paul, too, is maintaining that Jesus died. And yet, uh, Paul here, or the writer uh, of First uh, Timothy, is referring to the only God as being immortal. So the one who is immortal, that is the one who is the only God. Moreover, that what is invisible. Uh, notice how he writes, verse number 17, Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God. So who is that invisible one? It's not Jesus because Jesus was seen in the world. He came, he was seen, and he left the world. And the, the one who was not seen, that is the invisible one, that is the only God according to this writing. So now think about these descriptions, keep them in mind, and now we go to the end where we will see the same descriptions playing out but in more detail. So we go now to 1 Timothy chapter 6. And now uh, towards uh, the, the middle um, of this chapter, and this is the last chapter of this uh, writing. Paul, um, ostensibly Paul, is writing. I'm trying to find the, the, like where this sentence begins. It's a long sentence, starting with verse number uh, 13. Th starting with verse number 13. In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession. 
So let, let me pause there for a moment. Notice that he's distinguishing again between God and Christ. L let's hear that again. Verse number 13. In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus. You see the distinction. In the sight of God, and in the sight of Christ Jesus. Uh, who, while testifying, so that means the Christ Jesus was testifying before Pontius Pilate, um, who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession. So this is what he said. I charge you. So Paul is saying that Jesus, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, said these words. I charge you to keep his command. I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, there's something I missed here. I have to go over it. In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession. Okay, so he's not, he's not saying, he's not saying uh, that Jesus said these words, so that was my mistake. No. Paul is saying now, or the writer here is saying on behalf of Paul, that I charge you to keep this command, the following command, which he's going to elaborate now, without spot or blame, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ, he says here, in that order. Jesus Christ. Which God will bring about in his own time. Uh, so, uh, you know how I was looking for the right place to start? Uh, let me start with verse number 11. Then it becomes a little bit clearer. Um, verse number 11. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Okay, so now it's all making sense. So there's a good confession that he's talking about that uh, Timothy uh, must have uh, taken in the presence of many witnesses. Uh, so uh, now verse number 13, in the sight of God who gives life to everything and of Christ Jesus who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession. So uh, Paul is saying, I'm charging you in the sight of God and in the sight of Jesus Christ to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. So uh, notice what will happen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to this writer, uh, will come. And, and who will bring about his coming? It is God who will bring this about. So who will cause Jesus to appear before the end of time? It is God who will cause Jesus to appear before the end of time. So you see the, the distinction between God on the one hand and Jesus Christ on the other hand. This, this, this distinction is very clear and it is throughout. And now he specifies further. God, this is verse number 15 now. First Timothy chapter 6 verse number 15. He writes, God, the blessed and only ruler the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honor and might forever. Amen. Now it is clear that uh, the one who um, lives in unapproachable light, uh, that is... God, that is God. And obviously this is God the Father he's talking about, in, to use uh, the language of the New Testament. And uh, he's, that is the one who is the, the King of kings and Lord of lords. So Jesus is a Lord. He's referring to Jesus as Lord, but he's referring to someone else as the Lord of lords. So that one is the only true God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Uh, the only ruler, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings, Lord of lords, who alone is immortal. So he alone is immortal. So he cannot be killed. Uh, whereas, of course, the, Paul is accepting that Jesus died. And he lives in unapproachable light. He is the one whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honor and might 
forever. Amen. I was speaking before a, a group of uh, 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 ordinary folks in um, Malaysia, and uh, one of them was uh, a woman, was from a Catholic background, and um, uh, we, we talked about the Lord's Prayer, and uh, uh, she could recite the Lord's Prayer by heart, which is in um, uh, the Lord's Prayer, which is found in Matthew chapter 6, and uh, uh, there in, in the Lord's uh, Prayer, is it Matthew chapter 6? I'm going to look it up very quickly. Old man now. Lord's Prayer. Lord's Prayer. Okay. Our Father who, thou art, who art in heaven. Where is it? Where is it? Why don't they show us the first number very quickly? Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 13. So there you go. So yeah, this... Uh, an ordinary Muslim who once was a Christian uh, could uh, recall um, and recite the Lord's Prayer from memory. And, um, you know, notice how the Lord's Prayer ends. Uh, for thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And uh, the one who is referred to as thine, thou, uh, you know, it is yours, that is the Father. Because the, the prayer begins, our Father who art in heaven. And then it ends by saying, for thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, uh, this last part, for thine is the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. That part is uh, not mentioned in Matthew's gospel in the most uh, reliable manuscripts. But nevertheless, it has been memorized and recited for uh, a thousand years as uh, a part of the Lord's Prayer, as if Jesus taught all that. Um, and just looking up on, online, I can find uh, if, you know, praywithme.com has uh, the Lord's Prayer ending with, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Um, and that, of course, is uh, an address to the, the Father. So now, wrapping this all up together, it, it is very clear that uh, for for the writer of this letter to Timothy, uh, th there is only one God, and uh, and Jesus is called Lord, but he's not called God, and it, the the one who is called God is also called the Lord of Lords, and he is the blessed and only ruler. He is the King of Kings, and uh, he is the one who is immortal. He alone is said to be immortal. Verse number 16 of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6. Who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. And, and notice that by this time Jesus was seen because Jesus had come into the world. He lived and he was taken up into heaven. Uh, uh, Muslims and Christians agree on this. Uh, so people saw him and he was seen. But the one who is the only true God, uh, according to this passage, is the one who no one has seen and no one can see. So I think the matter is very clear, my brothers, sisters and friends, uh, and I leave that with you. A friend had asked me to give a simple proof uh, that our simple uh, proofs that Jesus on whom be peace is not God. And I think this is simple enough. This is clear. It is, uh, uh, you know, one uh, book among the many books of the New Testament, uh, and it is said to be written by Paul. And uh, if Paul didn't know that Jesus is God, well, then Jesus wasn't God. Uh, because uh, one might say, okay, that when Jesus was here on the earth, maybe people didn't recognize him as God. And uh, later on, his uh, disciples and followers, especially Paul, elaborated the concept that Jesus was actually God. But here we can see that uh, in this letter, uh, Jesus is not God. And now uh, we go back to where we began by talking about the authorship of this letter. If Paul wrote it, then clearly it means that uh, in Paul's mind, Jesus is not God. He's only a mediator between man and God, uh, between human beings and God. And uh, if this was written by someone else, uh, we recall that it began declaring that Paul is the writer. So if Paul is not the writer, then this is a different sort of problem. Uh, the problem that is known as pseudonymity, where uh, some uh, documents that make up the New Testament uh, are ostensibly written by someone who is not the actual author. So this is the problem of pseudonymity. Um, 
but leaving that problem aside, even if we uh, go along with the um, view that somebody else wrote this letter, um, and in fact, I am inclined to that view because it's a, it's a widely acclaimed uh, scholarly view now, and only the conservative scholars want to hold on to the idea that Paul wrote this letter because to avoid the uh, problem of pseudonymity. Uh, or with good intentions, or, you know, they, maybe they're convinced that uh, Paul actually wrote this and they have good arguments, uh, stylistic features and so on. You know, these things can sometimes be argued both ways. But uh, I would maintain that, uh, you know, you had a traditional view for a long time uh, saying that Paul wrote this. And then that traditional view is now uh, being called into question uh, by biblical scholars. Uh, most of them coming out of the traditional milieu like they they were um, good christian scholars previously you know they went to college they studied uh, they they became good christian scholars and then eventually as they studied more and more they realized wait a minute some things that we said in our tradition are not are quite correct and then they come to a new view and then uh, one of them announces the view two of them hold the view three four five you know they, it gradually grows that means that over time uh, people are leaving the traditional view and they were adopting the the new one why are they adopting the new one uh, because the evidence for the new one is actually better uh, so uh, after a while, you know, even those diehards who are holding on to the traditional view are being convinced one after another and they're leaving alone the traditional view. Uh, so I, I feel that uh, there must be good arguments in favor of the, uh, of the revised view. Otherwise, people would not be leaving the tradition to adopt this, uh, this new view. But uh, ultimately, it comes down to seeing the details of the arguments on both sides. But uh, we're saying now that either way, uh, though I'm inclined to the idea that uh, someone else put this in Paul's name, uh, in, even in, in, in that case, even in that case, um, you, you have the uh, problem that the writer is not only uh, writing as though he's Paul, uh, but but he's pretending to be Paul all the way down. So with all of the ideas, remember how he wrote at the beginning that, uh, you know, um, I, I urged you when I was traveling here and there. So it's as if it's as if the writer is placing himself into the mind of Paul and pretending to be Paul all the way down. Uh, through. So the, the writer is not only reflecting back on what Paul would have said about the places he traveled to and so on, but also the beliefs that Paul would have held. So uh, this writer uh, is representing what Paul believed, or at least what the writer would like to portray Paul as having believed. And uh, if uh, the writer is not correct in that portrayal, then we have uh, a, a compounded problem. Not only is the writer uh, writing under a false name, uh, but uh, the writer is uh, misrepresenting Paul all the way down while claiming that he is writing uh, like, like this is Paul writing. Now, one uh, uh, one view of this problem of pseudonymity to, to defend the Bible and to uh, not let it appear to be so problematic is to say, well, you know, the ancient writers, uh, they uh, sometimes wrote in the name of a, a great leader uh, out of humility. They, they didn't want to credit the writing to themselves. They didn't want to say, look, I've come up with all these great ideas. I can see all of these great things. No, they wanted to attribute that to their teacher to give credit to the teacher. So they're out, out of good intentions, not, not to cheat anybody or to mislead anyone, but just to say, you know, uh, you know that I'm writing this letter, that's well and good, but I'm writing it as though my teacher is writing it because really everything I know really comes from my teacher. So let's take this humble view. But uh, if, uh, if this is the view, well then the student had better uh, write what uh, the teacher had actually believed. And from what we can see here, uh, the student, if, if it is a student writing this, uh, is really showing us that Paul uh, believed that there is only one God, the one who is unseen, the one who does not die, uh, and the one who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So Jesus was a king, 
according to them. Not, not, he didn't actually fulfill the role of a king in an earthly sense, but he was theoretically the king of the Jews. And uh, he is a lord. Um, uh, however, yeah, I should explain that, that term, lord. But I'll, I'll put that on, on hold for a moment, and I'll come back to it in just a moment. So, he was the Lord, but there is one who is the Lord of Lords, and that is not Jesus. That is the one whom Christians call the Father. Now, the term Lord. The term Lord can be a simple term meaning something like Sir or Master, uh, but it could also mean the Lord God. And, of course, uh, um, if, if one wants to specify that this is the Lord God, one might say the Lord God. One might not always specify. We might just refer to God as the Lord. Uh, and you might refer to a human being who is not God as the Lord. So some confusion might occur that way. Uh, but once it is clear from some of the person's writings that uh, that person does not regard Jesus as God, then we should not take the title Lord uh, as indicating that Jesus is God. It's just we know from elsewhere in the person's own writing that there is only one God, the one whom uh, the writer calls God, <laughs> as in verse number 15. Uh, when he says in verse number 14 that... Uh, um, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, then 15, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honor and might forever. Amen. And that's the end of verse number 16. So uh, that uh, is the end of my discourse for today. I will turn to your questions and comments and try to answer them the best I can. Uh, and I'm also looking to see if anyone has shared the post. Uh, brothers, sisters, friends, if you feel that uh, this post of is, any, is of any benefit, then uh, please share it so that others uh, can see that as well. I see that there have been seven shares, but uh, sometimes I, I see the, the names of the persons who have shared this, the, the post. So I guess you have that option either to tell me or not to tell me. Um, because uh, I don't see the names of those who have shared the post, but uh, Allah knows your names, and I pray that Allah will bless you all. If I knew your names, I'll call them out. I'll call out your names, but uh, um, it, it, it's your choice. Uh, but I see that seven people have shared it, and I thank you for that. May Allah bless you all. Okay, so looking at your questions and comments, uh, I see that... Um, okay, uh, Brother Anwar uh, saying Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Allah bless you and you too, my brother Anwar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and all of the people around you. Elisa, sister Elisa saying Assalamu Alaikum, Shaykh. Wa Alaikum Assalam, my sister. And uh, I see, okay. Bhasa uh, Malayu, okay. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and all of the people of uh, Malaysia and, uh, and elsewhere. Chilani. Um, it, I had that in front of me and it uh, moved. Okay, so Brother Jelani Usman saying Christianity can't compete with uh, LGBTQ. What about those Muslim? So Brother Jelani, this is uh, another topic and uh, I would rather reserve that for another time if you don't mind. Perhaps we'll discuss that topic in some detail on another post. Uh, Brother Abdullah Bashiru saying uh, Paul is a false self-acclaimed apostle whose writings have deviated the Christians. Now, uh, Brother Abdullah, um, there, 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 um, many scholars will concur with a certain aspect of what you've written there. Uh, some will refer to Paul as the founder of Christianity. And uh, I have, uh, in many of my lectures and debates and so on, have shown that uh, Paul has been an important contributor uh, to the evolution of Christianity. He has steered it uh, through his writings uh, towards uh, a b belief uh, that Jesus is greater than a human being by calling Jesus Lord as he has. Uh, that has lent some support, to, not full support, uh, uh, to Christians who would uh, grasp at anything to try and support their traditional belief and that Jesus is God. Often they will find some such support in the writings of, of Paul. But of course, we've seen that if they pay such if they pay careful attention to what Paul wrote, and uh, they would realize that even Paul did not consider Jesus to be 
But uh, at the same time, let's uh, speak a little charitably when we speak, uh, you know, let's uh, cushion our words and uh, make our statements palatable so that uh, our Christian friends uh, may be inclined to think about what we're saying and to study the matter uh, further. Okay, so... Um, Yes, uh, after Brother Jelani and Brother Abdul, I see Brother Osmanu, okay, and uh, yeah, so those are all of the comments that I see today, uh, and uh, if there are any others, okay, I see Brother Shahin Azad saying, Salam Shabir, because I know you are interested in the mathematical structure of the Quran, I share three of my articles about that subject, although they are in Persian, you can easily translate them by Google or AI. Thank you so much, my brother. May Allah SWT bless you. And uh, if you can uh, send me by email as well, that would be good. I'll, be, I'll have a chance uh, to uh, look at that. And if you can do me a favor, translate it for me using the methods that you mentioned uh, so that you can go over it and make sure that the translations are correct before you send them to me. Otherwise, if I you know, get an incorrect translation either from Google or, or so on, but by the way, I, I, I'm not introduced to AI yet, so I have to learn a lot more. Uh, and you young folks will, will teach me, and thank you for that. Uh, but, but you can see if it's, uh, you know, sometimes it takes a human being to look over what uh, the artificial intelligence has done and make sure that it is fully, fully intelligent. Uh, so make, uh, please uh, translate it for me and then send it to me by email. That'll be easier for me. Brother Akib Zaman saying, Salam, sir, how are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. And thank you, Brother Akib, uh, for your salam. May Allah SWT bless you. And wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dennis saying, when it says the mediator between God and mankind is the man, Jesus Christ, I assume Trinitarians would say that just the human nature is the mediator between God and mankind. That raises the question for me, how the human nature and the divine uh, nature can be separated in that context, especially when we keep the introduction in one verse one, chapter one, verse one in mind. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, uh, by the command of God, our Savior, and of Christ Jesus, our hope. Yes, you're right, Dennis. So they may uh, give that defense, but you, as you've pointed out, that is a weak defense, because uh, even in their theology, they're not supposed to separate between the uh, the human and the divine nature. They say that there was only uh, that there were two natures. Yes, but the two natures are inseparable. They're they're indivisible. Uh, so yeah, I think you have a good point there. Uh, uh, brother Justin Joy saying Muslim scholars do not accept apostles John and Paul calling them several names. If anyone quotes them and teaches or interprets from their texts, they'll also have to believe what they have written. Well, not really, uh, Justin. You see, I can quote what you are saying. I can say to another person beside me, look, Justin Joy is saying Muslim scholars do not accept apostles uh, and so on. Um, uh, so my quoting you does not mean that I accept everything that you say. You're quoting me. If you go and tell somebody else, Shabir Ali said this, uh, it doesn't mean that, that you, um, you, you believe everything I say. You're just uh, faithfully uh, recounting what I, what I said. And, uh, in, and uh, as for interpreting and so on, we're, what we're saying to our Christian friends here is pay attention to your scriptures. Think about what Paul actually stood for. Uh, so I, I'm not saying believe in, that Muslims believe in everything that Paul said. No, I, I'm, I'm saying that uh, our Christians don't seem to believe, our Christian friends don't seem to believe Paul when Paul positioned Jesus as being between uh, God and humankind. Rather, uh, they're trying to put Jesus right up on par with God himself, whereas Paul clearly placed him below God. Uh, so... And this is, I think, something that our Christian friends need to pay attention to. And it is a problem for our Christian friends, not a problem for our Muslim friends, because our Muslim friends um, uh, feel that, you know, 
Paul may not have been a genuine disciple of Jesus. And uh, while the Quran speaks about the gospel, uh, the Quran does not speak about the writings of, of Paul. Okay, so uh, Brother Farhan Najib saying, Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Shabir, hope all is well, stay all is blessed, and Dabalikum Assalam, my brother, may Allah SWT bless you and all the people of your country. And uh, Mekhi Adam saying, that's illogical reasoning, just enjoy. Okay, so you concur with me. And um, uh, then it's saying, interesting, uh, interestingly, Jehovah's Witnesses refer uh, the part in chapter 6 verses 15 to 16 to Jesus uh, but they refer to the raised Jesus so since his resurrection no man can see him and since his resurrection he dwells in unapproachable light they do that because verse 14 refers to Jesus oh interesting let me look at that uh, from that perspective and see so first Timothy chapter 6 and um, so we see a verse number uh, okay let me start with 13 in the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made good the confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot and blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which uh, God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings uh, and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honor and might forever. Amen. So, uh, Dennis, uh, I I think you probably concur with me that uh, th there's no way that this actually is a reference to Jesus. Um, Jesus was referred to the one who is to appear in the future, but his, his appearance will be brought about by God in God's own time. And it's God, the God that the writer is speaking about here is specified as the blessed and only ruler the king of kings and lord of lords and i don't believe that our jehovah's witnesses friends uh, take jesus to be uh, the blessed and only ruler the king of kings and lord of lords who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light and and so on it'd be interesting to see how the jehovah's witnesses uh, new world translation of the bible renders this new world translation of the Holy Scriptures. Um, so where is it? Is it online here? New World Translation at jw.org. Um, so let's look at it. And we see here uh, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. And I want chapter 6. So they go from verse 13 before God who preserves all things alive and Jesus Christ who is a witness made uh, the fine public declaration before Pontius Pilate. I give you orders uh, to observe the commandment in a spotless and irreprehensible way until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ which the happy and only potentate will show in its own appointed times he is the oh this is what they've done he is the king of those who rule as kings and a lord of those who rule as lords and the the one alone having immortality who dwells in unapproachable light whom no man has seen or can see to him be honor and eternal might amen so you see what they have done dennis uh, is that they have broken up the sentence starting a new sentence with he is the king so in that case they 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 can try to make that refer to jesus but uh the uh, the, the end does not uh, uh, accord with what we know about jesus because the the one alone having immortality who dwells in unapproachable light whom no man has seen or can see so now you would have to insert here and say no man has seen in his present state but but you know it's 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 odd to be saying that like you know so jesus is taken up he's up there in in, in heaven okay it's a it's a done deal nobody sees him as he is now uh, but but this statement can only be referring to one who was never seen uh, so no one can see him uh, he so he is in in theory not visible and even the one who let's say Jesus is uh, you know raised up into his glory uh, and then he will come back and he will be seen so that means he is 
potentially visible but the one who is being spoken about here is not even potentially visible so that that is the difference uh, so even with that uh, difference in the translation I don't think they can accomplish that and uh, moreover I find it strange that uh, Jehovah's Witnesses would want to um, render it this way to make this a reference to Jesus uh, because Jehovah's Witnesses are strong in rejecting the Trinity and rejecting the suggestion that Jesus is God. But nonetheless, a lot of strange things do happen. And perhaps there is uh, some more that we need to learn about the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, movement. Okay, Justin saying, please confirm whether you accept uh, the Old Testament and the prophecies contained in it or not. Theologians do not know who exactly wrote the letter to Hebrews, but due to the theological and doctrinal depth, it is attributed to St. Paul. Okay, so um, do I accept the Old Testament and the prophecies contained in it or not? So, well, it, it is not uh, a simple yes or no, Justin. Uh, for Muslims, uh, the Old Testament contains uh, revelations which God gave to his previous prophets, but not everything therein is revelation given to God's previous uh, prophets. And even that which started out as a revelation Revelation from God's pre previous uh, to God's previous prophets may have suffered some modification and change over time. So, so too for the prophecies that are mentioned therein. Actually, much of what people uh, mention as prophecies are not really prophecies. They were things which were said uh, there to refer to local events, like events that are proximate to the time of the writers. But uh, some people have taken them to be references to Jesus coming 700 years after Isaiah, for example, and have taken the uh, writings of Isaiah to uh, be references to Jesus. Uh, so there's a lot of misinterpretation and, and so on. So one is the uh, text itself. Is this really authentically from the prophet? So a Muslim can take a hands-off approach to that and say, well, you know, we can't commit one way or another because we know in general that God revealed messages to his prophets and in principle we believe in the messages that God revealed to his prophets, but we cannot say that this precisely is the, the exact writing of the previous prophets. And secondly, the problem of interpretation. Starting with this as the writing of the previous prophets, uh, we cannot be sure sometimes what they mean. A lot of things, uh, for example, in the book of Isaiah are uh, poetic in form and uh, poetry by their very nature sometimes uh, is elusive and uh, it is hard to know what exactly they refer to. But it is clear that often in the Old Testament there is something that is referring to an occasion happening at the time or in proximity to the writer, but uh, Christian interpreters have taken those passages as references to Jesus coming 700 years uh, later. So a Muslim would have no reason to concur with that sort of uh, interpretation. Now, Muslims, of course, uh, take some passages as reference to, to the Prophet Muhammad, on whom be peace. That could only be defended if one is saying that uh, I'm uh, doing what Christians have already done, meaning that they've taken the passages, uh, divorced them from their historical context, and then make them refer to something just by the very wording. Uh, but there are some passages which uh, 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 might be interpreted as uh, opening the way for uh, the, the Prophet Muhammad and whom be peace. For example, the one who is said to be the prophet like Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse number 18. So one might say, along with uh, some uh, biblical interpreters, that this means that whenever a prophet is needed, one will come. And uh, certainly in Arabia, a, a prophet was needed, and our prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent by God. Uh, to fulfill that uh, role. Okay, just enjoy. For those finding it hard to believe whether Jesus is God incarnate or not, they'll have to wait until his second coming. If Father alone is God Almighty, a cruel and jealous God, why and how can Jesus become a final judge? Well, uh, Justin, uh, God can appoint someone to be the judge, uh, and if he does, uh, then that, that judge would be one who is appointed by God. It wouldn't be God himself. Um, Abu Hanin saying Assalamu Alaikum and Wa Alaikum Assalam Brother Abu Hanin and Shakib Ishaq saying why would God mislead Christians including the apostles for hundreds of uh, years so uh, Shakib I don't believe that God misled Christians uh, um, you know the 
um, there is a way of speaking about God misleading people, of course, this is mentioned in the Quran and so on, you misguides whom he wills and so on. But the flip side of that is that people choose the misguidance. So when, you know, you can say that these two things are happening simultaneously, like two magnets attracting each other, uh, so that the two are pulling each other. So uh, in, in a similar way, uh, a person is choosing misguidance, you can say that God is misguiding that person. These are like two uh, sides of the same coin. Uh, but it's not that God deliberately misled some people, no, or, or did something that caused people to be misled and then he blames the people for that. Um, people followed, uh, you know, um, sometimes teachers who themselves were not guided. In fact, uh, the, the Quran says, uh, you know, um, I do not follow um, uh, and I don't remember the exact words now, but uh, the uh, as part of that uh, phrase that I'm looking for uh, is the statement that uh, uh, they were misguided and they misguided others as well. So don't follow the people who misguided others when they themselves were misguided. Uh, this, I believe, is mentioned in the fifth chapter of the Quran. So no, I wouldn't uh, concur with the idea that God misled uh, the followers of uh, of Christianity. Okay, Omar Osman, uh, Assalamu alaikum, Ya Sheikh, may Allah bless you. Uh, I'm also a student of comparative religion from Nigeria. Your videos uh, inspires me a lot. Wallahi, I want you to advise me for Allah's sake. Uh, so my brother Omar, uh, my advice to you is to study deeply uh, so that when you speak about uh, the uh, matter of comparative religion, uh, you should be able to represent the faith of others uh, properly so that they can hear you. Uh, speaking as one of their own might have spoken about the basic facts and then comes the Muslim interpretation which of course they would not agree with but at least they should be able to agree that you have correctly represented the, their beliefs and their scriptures and so on so that requires a lot of careful study and uh, I say this knowing that sometimes Muslims are just armed with a few uh, verses of the Bible here and there they throw that out and they do not uh, um, gain credibility from the part of our Christian friends because it might seem to them uh, that uh, we Muslims do not really know what we are talking about. Some might feel that anyway, but uh, let's not give them more reason than, than necessary. Okay, Justin uh, Joy saying, for uh, ancient apostolic Christianity, LGBTQ is an anathema. Protestant Christianity does not have the same beliefs. Okay, so as I said, I'll leave that a topic for now. And uh, Chinedu Vincent saying, even if uh, even you that speaking about how about God now until you die before you can understand oh, that Jesus is beside you even when you are doing this video. So uh, Chinedu, um, I, I have to read back over your um, uh, comment one more time. Even you that are speaking about God now until you die before you can understand that Jesus is beside you even when you are doing this video. Okay, so you feel that Jesus is beside me. Okay, interesting, interesting thought. Um, yeah, so I'm going to leave it aside um, because uh, that's, you know, that's, that's your belief and I respect your belief. Um, but I think I've demonstrated from First Timothy that the writer did not think that Jesus is God. Okay, my friend Stephen Atkins, let the Bible speak. You want me to let the Quran speak, so please extend the same courtesy to me and let the Bible speak. Yeah, by all means, uh, Stephen. And uh, of course, I've let the Bible speak today. I have actually looked carefully at the uh, letter to Timothy, and I've looked at the beginning, the middle, and the end, and I've seen that uh, in this letter it is clear that Jesus is uh, not God. And by the way, Stephen, uh, I saw your email. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to reply um, to your email uh, about uh, the love for Jesus, uh, commenting on my uh, dialogue in, in with uh, Father Thomas in Malaysia. Uh, so yeah, that was an interesting dialogue. And uh, I, I saw your, your email after the dialogue was, was done. Uh, but you will notice, uh, Stephen, that in the dialogue itself, I um, you know, I nuanced my presentation and I, I drew attention to the fact that Christians love Jesus in a way that Muslims will not be able to compete uh, because uh, that ultimate level of love we reserve only for God. 
and uh, so Muslims love Jesus yes but it doesn't mean we love him as God we love him as a prophet as a human being as a servant and messenger of God okay just enjoy uh, the Lord's Prayer ends uh, uh, as for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen and yes uh, Justin so you see the, the one the, the one who said one thine that means yours yours for yours is the kingdom so the one uh, who uh, to whom belongs the, the the kingdom and the power and glory forever and ever uh, that is the father who is addressed in the Lord's uh, prayer Get Tyrone and An Singh saying uh, the Quran was plagiarized from the Bible. Now, of course, some people some people may have that view, Tyrone. Uh, however, um, you will see that in story after story, wh when the Quran has material that is similar to what is there in the Bible, you will see that the Quran is improving upon and uh, correcting from the Quran's own point of view the narrative as it was found in in the Bible. Uh, so it's not that the Quran is copying, but from the Quran's point of view, the Quran is correcting. And uh, this has been acknowledged uh, that to be the Quranic stance by great scholars such as Sidney Griffith in his book, uh, uh, The Bible in Arabic. Okay, um, Justin, uh, saying not when they say that those New Testament texts as corrupt and edited texts. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what you mean by that, Justin, so please elaborate a bit further. And Justin saying, according to Church Fathers, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses are not true Christians. They have edited the scriptures to fit their teachings. Now, of course, uh, Justin, uh, you know, who is a true Christian? He, you know, everyone who claims to be a Christian himself or herself uh, may uh, want to say that uh, those who disagree with him or her uh, are the ones who are not true Christians. So that, that becomes now a matter of opinion. But uh, academics uh, will uh, take a person's self-confession as being valid. Someone confesses to be Muslim or Christian or whatever. We would say, you know, we attribute to this, to this person the religion of their choice and of their confession. Okay, Harrison, uh, I, uh, of course, uh, I should add here, Justin, that, you know, you as a follower of one branch of Christianity may reserve for yourself the right to say that you are on the right path and those who differ with you are on the wrong path. They're, they're not true Christians, you can say that. But uh, being an outsider like myself, I'm not the one to judge who is a true Christian and who is not from, from, from an academic point of view. But as a Muslim, looking at this with Muslim eyes, I would say that those who follow Jesus and whom be peace are more deserving of being called true Christians because uh, Christianity by definition uh, or, or Christian by definition is Christ-like, imitator of Christ. So those who uh, believe like Christ believed and worship like Christ worshipped and so on, those are most deserving of being called uh, uh, Christian. And uh, in this respect, I uh, might uh, refresh the memory of those who uh, witnessed my, my dialogue in, in Malaysia uh, recently, where I uh, pointed out that Muslims, in my view, are, are, are true Christians because we uh, believe as Jesus believed, uh, we practice some of the things that Jesus practiced, and uh, we believe that we are his true followers, and therefore, by definition, uh, we are uh, Christ-like, and that means that we are Christian. Um, okay, so um, Har Harrison saying, stick to your Quran. So Harrison, you know, in, in my undergraduate study, I studied a lot about the Bible. So um, yes, the Quran is mine. And uh, sometimes people want to know uh, comparatively, like how does this play out in another scripture? So Muslims have been saying, no, Jesus is not God. So a Muslim might be wondering, but wait a minute, is it possible that maybe in, in the, the Christian scriptures, Jesus is uh, presented as God and, and we Muslims just don't know about that? So I've, I've tried to show that in fact, no, he's not presented as God, even in the Christian, Christian scriptures. And uh, the idea that he's God is a misunderstanding. So maybe some Christians will benefit from uh, seeing that uh, interpretation of the Bible. Uh, perhaps they, they need they were not exposed to that previously. And uh, Roman Parr is uh, saying, uh, uh, okay, so he's uh, quoting from uh, the Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 4, 
that refers to Satan as the god of this world. It's an interesting passage, but I don't know what point you're making about it. Uh, sister Lubica saying, Salam alaikum, may Allah bless uh, you and your family. Thank you, my sister, and uh, may Allah bless you as well and your family and all of the people of uh, Belgium. And uh, Aliyu Al Hassan saying, Ibrahim, uh, okay, so you're, you're uh, alerting someone else to listen to this, okay. Um, and Tijani saying, thanks for the education. Thank you so much, my brother Tijani. And uh, Roman Parsing, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear Sheikh, I pray that you will be under God's protection and the, thank you for opening people's eyes. May God reward your efforts. Thank you so much, my brother. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa bless you as well and uh, all of your loved ones. So those are all of the comments that I see. And uh, I see that uh, Dauda has sh uh, shared my post. Thank you, brother Dauda. So too has Tho Madi. Ngong Kusin, sorry if I mispronounce your name, but thank you for sharing the post and Brother Omar Osman as well. And uh, may Allah bless you all. And uh, I'm going to leave you at this point then. Those are all of the comments I see for the moment. And uh, I invite you next week again, uh, same time, here on my Facebook page where we will continue our discussion on comparative religion issues. So thank you all for joining me. May Allah bless you all and bless all of the people. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. I sneeze there. That's my bell to say, time to go. All right. So thank you all again. May Allah SWT bless you all. And I look forward to seeing you next week. And uh, may Allah SWT unite us all in Jannah forever. Uh, peace be with you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.